Hello everyone, today I will present you image processing modules in Trivial Engine and how can you use it on your own projects. So let's jump right into it. When you open Trivial Engine or Imagine, application is in theory exactly the same, uh, but there are some uh, limitations to the Imagine. Basically not limitation, but some reduced functionality since it's uh, meant for just 2D processing, images and videos, so you don't need like, for instance, 3D viewer like we have in the Freewheel engine. So we can see that in the view, and if we pick imagine, we now have that application, and if you right click, we, you see we have some options here, but if you go back to the Trivial engine, now we have much more options. And some of those include 3D processing, which we will not cover in this video. So let's go to the view and then node editor of Trivial Engine. So the first thing and the simplest thing about image processing in which we should go through the image generator nodes. And in, with these nodes, we can actually manually create some images or textures. So let's create circle. So we now got this image and we have some parameters to edit these images in real time, which we have its width and height, radius, edge, rotation, U and V position, or U and V scale. So if you change its radius, we see now we get image that has more radius. If you change edges, we have smoother edges or not. We can change rotation, but since this circle is centered in the image, we won't see any results. So let's change U position. And now if we play with rotation, we see we have different image. Okay, let's create a different one. We go right click and image generator nodes, we can pick like a triangle. And pretty much some of the attributes are repeated in all of those uh, image generator nodes. And those are edge, rotation, UNV position and UNV scale. Some of the parameters, as you can see, is X0 and Y0, so we can change the position of these uh, vertices or points of this triangle, so we can edit it in real time. Also, we have edge, so now we have smoother edges or not. But since this video is about creating this using Python, uh, we will discuss that now. So, if you right-click and go to the tab of uh, script editor you have two options one is python script editor and the other is python image script editor so basically the first one is general purpose python script editor and the second one is how to use python and trivial engines python modules to create edit combine and do whatever with these images so let's create this python image script editor so on the left, we can see uh, actual code, which we can edit and write. On the top right part, we can see the widget that actually previews the image. And on the bottom, bottom right corner, we can see the console. So this is the default image. This is going to be presented whenever you don't output anything or you have some errors in your code. So a lot of this uh, modules are automatically imported when you run this. There are some third-party modules like NumPy, OpenCV and PySide, which is basically cute. So you can create any widgets with uh, this in the, inside this Python image script editor. And what we are interested in is actually this part. Uh, those are image modules or basically image processing modules. We have image combined modules, image filtered modules, generate modules, general Python image and Python images modules, load image, modify, save, scatter, image transform, and so on. We will discuss also image UV modules, uh, some of the math modules. We are not going to cover in this video mesh modules and 3D modules in general, that's probably going to be covered in some other video. Uh, we have line modules, which are also 3D entities, so we're not going to cover them in this video, and we have some system modules. So let's start creating something. So to actually preview image inside of this, we have to use naming convention, and that is image out. So we have to create 
variable that's called image out. So how can we do that? And the simplest thing is, and that's why we started with image generate nodes, is we can use this pg underscore image generate. So if we type pg underscore image generate and create circle and execute this code, now we have this circle. Uh, obviously, we can create a triangle. So let's type triangle here and run it. Obviously, all of these parameters are available in these functions, so we can type rot and equal to 45 degrees, which means we will rotate this triangle by 45 degrees. So how to know which uh, attributes are available to these functions? Uh, we can see that in a configuration JSON file that comes in this application. So this is it. It's kind of massive and it defines all of the parameters, all of the styles, and basically everything that's needed to set up this application. So if we search in this application for the circle, uh, we can see which model it comes from, and this is its parameters. So it has height, width, radius, edge, rot, U position, B position, U scale, and V scale. Uh, we have defined here minimum value, the default value that you get when you create this node, and the maximum value. Obviously, in the code, you can go uh, beyond and above that. I've tried to cover most of the edge cases, but if you do something wild, there is a chance you can crash this function, go with some division by zero. But as I said, I've tried to cover most of these cases, so there shouldn't be any crashes. So that's why we use rot. Since I already know we have that available, we can use u position and type u position is 0 0.4 and execute. Now we moved it in the u axis by uh, 0 0.4. So that's basically the overview of uh, image generate nodes. You can basically create all the image generate nodes that are available here using code. And all of the parameters, if you're not aware of which one can you use, you can find in the configuration JSON file. All of these images are basically NumPy arrays, which we can show here. So if you print this image and execute, we can see its values. It's mostly zeros, that's why it's mostly black. But if we print image out maximum value, oh, let's say first minimum, and then image out maximum value, you can see that minimum value is zero and the maximum is one. So, uh, and also we can print like, let's print type of image out. And also since we know it's going to be numpy, we can print image out data type. So yeah, the minimum value is zero, the maximum value is one, it's numpy array and all this value uh, float 64. So since this is numpy array, we can do anything basically in numpy with these images. So let's do something like um, image out is equal to image out, but divided by two. And now you see it's more of a grayish image. So now the triangle is not white. That's basically because, let's copy it on the end. The maximum value should now be 0 0.5. So that means like all of the math that we can apply to these images for image process is now very simple since all of this is NumPy. We support two type of images inside of this application. One we already showed. So that's the one that is NumPy array with data type of NumPy float64 and values from zero to one. The other option is uh, unsigned integer 8 with pixel values from 0 to 255. So if we do something like this, we multiply all the values with 255 and then we 
convert it to the S type to NumPy unsigned integer 8 and we run it. Nothing should change. The output image is now contains different values, but this application handles that exactly the same as uh, float 64 values in the range from 0 to 1. Okay, let's now show some image modify nodes. So if you right click, go to the image modifier, we have all of these options. So let's say we are interested in a blur. Uh, by default in on image modify nodes, we can see that on our default image. So it has by default strand of the value of seven, but if we reduce it to one, basically have the original image. Okay, so how can we apply this to the, let's say, circle triangle? Okay, let's make this circle centered again. Uh, put it to zero. And it's not the best example since he has the edges. Let's say edges are not smooth and then we want to blur it. We uh, click on this output socket and then we click on the input socket of the blur. Now, as we can see, we can smooth out this circle. Okay, we can do exactly the same with the triangle. Triangle has some edge, so let's reduce it to zero so we can see this result better. If we connect it, the previous connection is gonna be deleted and now we have this blurred triangle. So let's do this in a code. So our example is pretty bad, so let's change it remove its new position and run it again. So now it's centered. Let's re also remove the rotation since we don't need it. And we can remove our division by zero since that's something we also don't need. Okay, so now we have this image out. We can remove this also and let's use a pg underscore image modify on it and we can use blur so now this blur actually needs input and input is also image out and if you run it we get something like this since in our blur we have some default values and you can see that here so actually the key size or the kernel size for that blur is 7 by default but we can go much higher let's say key size is 20. now it's much blur, much more blurred than the previous image okay let's see something else uh, what options do we have we have image modifier let's say edges also, this is implemented edges on the default image, but let's say we want to implement or find these edges on the circle image. If we connect it, now we can see we got the edges of this circle, but if we connect triangle, we also can see the edges of this triangle. There are multiple, sh multiple options here. Uh, we can get values in the range from 0 to 1, no bounds, or clip the values. Let's say 0 to 1. We have different option for the filter. We can see them here. I stick with Sobel and we can change the angle of this calculation. So hopefully you can see that on the recording. Nice. So let's apply these edges to our, we can apply it to the blurred image, but the edges are not gonna be visible as much. So let's apply remove this blur and apply just edges and if you run it now we have these edges this image is not exactly the same as we have a triangle here but we are going to discuss it later that's because this is now in srgb core space and this is in rgb but we can convert it we can see that in actual node in a title icon so if we turn it off, now you see it's actually the same color in this. And this basically means the pixel values are near linear space. There is no gamma correction. We will discuss this later anyway, but if you turn it on, it looks different. And we can actually 
use and apply gamma correction using the function to this image. But let's stick to this for now. We can also load and store images. Uh, the easiest way to load the image is to just drag and drop it. So on the desktop we have these test images. So let's say we want to just drop Mario into the node editor. And now we have this image available for processing. Uh, let's apply some modifier, image modifier, and then pixelate, connect it. And now we have pixelated Mario. Let's reduce rows and columns to something like 15 times 15. Nice. Okay, now we want to load this using code. For that we have, uh, let's create image out, pg underscore image load and then image. And then we have to give it the path. Let's check what the path actually is. Let's put this and then use, let's say, Luigi. Properties, it is the PNG. Let's type Luigi PNG. Replace these. And let's execute the code. Now we have Luigi available which can also be pixelated if we just connect this to this. Also, this is now in sRGB color space, so we can do it like, we can turn it on or off. Okay, uh, if we want to save image, we just modify it here. Image out is, we can also disconnect this. Image out is equal to pg underscore image modifier and then pixel it and then image out rerun it now the Luigi is pixelated and then we can use something like pg underscore image save and then u image we save it as unsigned image because that's how images are saved on the system with values from 0 to 255 so save this u image and then create some path that is new Luigi and execute. We have error. Let's see what could be the issue. Is it like um, this is the first argument and this is the second? Rerun it and now nothing happens. Let's check it on the system. And we have new Luigi. Uh, so what is the issue why don't we have anything is because uh, we have image and we save it as unsigned image so we have to convert it image out is equal to image out multiply to 255 and convert it to as type of numpy unsigned integer 8 now execute and now we have no Luigi on the desktop that is pixelated. Besides image generator node and image modifier node, we have image combiner node. So let's import some other images. Let's say Luigi and Goomba. So let's say we want to combine some of these nodes. We have image combiner and then we can concatenate let's say three images so this image concatenate has three input sockets connect one second and third so because now the images are not of the same size we see we have to actually append some columns uh, to the first and the third image since the second image is the largest we have some options here uh, we can uh, combine them vertically or horizontally. Uh, we can scale channels. So because all of this image actually have four channels, this basically does nothing. But if one of these images is actually gray scaled, then actually the putting the scale to the scale down would actually convert all of those images to the gray scale image. And we have option for the color with basically a background color, so you can put it to like a yellow. Okay, so let's do this using code. So 
So we have Luigi, let's name it image one. And then image two. Let it be Mario. And image three is Goomba. Okay, now we have these three images and we can create image out which is pg underscore image combine and then concatenate free and then we put these images as arguments we can also delete all the other things and we can execute an error cured image free is not defined okay now we have these three images, as you can see here. Let's now show how to use masks. So first, let's drag and drop some image. Let's use Mario. And let's ap apply some modifier. So let's go through the image modifier nodes. And let's first scale it. So scale it down to the 50% of the initial width and the initial height. So let's not preserve the dimensions, original dimensions, but actually adjust it. So now the actual width and height are the half of the initial or the original width and height. Let's now apply a different modifier. And let's apply, let's say, dithering. And let's apply to the whole image. So, as you can see, we have here a mask socket. So we, with this socket, we can actually define what do we want to deter? Is it like the whole image or only one part of it? So let's create some masks to show this. So in image generator we can pick some of the images. So let's create a line. So let's make it thicker. And let's remove the edges. So if you now connect this image uh, to this dithering image modifier node as a mask, you can see now mostly we have the original image, but only where the pixels are white on these masks, we apply this dithering. So if we, let's say, rotate it, we can see the results are changed in real time. So let's do something similar using the code. So first we have to load something. So image is equal to the pg underscore image load, and then load image. So let's get the path. Let's use uh, Goomba.png and let's show this image. Is the path actually okay? Yeah, we can see this image. So let's apply some modifier to this. Uh, let's say image let's say image normal map is equal to the pg underscore image modify and then create a normal map of the initial image execute nothing's changed but let's show now this image normal map oh sorry so now we get the normal map of the original image so the thing is we want to apply the mask. So we don't want to normal map or the original image. We want to original image that's masked and we want to apply normal map on only the mask part. So we first we have to create a mask. Let's create a mask as a pg underscore image generate and then just a circle. And now we have to actually use this mask. So now we have the original image modify image and the mask so the output image the image out is gonna be p, p, pg underscore image combine and then mask image we input the original image the image normal map which is modify image and mask is equal to the mask we can remove this part and execute it so now we can see that only on the central part or only where we have the circle or the mask, we have this normal map. We can actually show it like this. 
what is a mask image out is uh, equal to mask so if we now re make radius more to 0 0.2 and then run this we can see only small part is only small part has applied normal map but now the bigger part has actually normal map so that's actually basics of how masks work let's show now how image uvs work so all the images have this uv input socket so let's create some uvs if you right click we have this image uv generator nodes which has only one node and that's the uvs so if we connect this output uv to this uv you see the image is now changed and the thing is well first let's explain this uvs it's actually the space on which we render this image so we can edit this underlying space of the images so image is automatically remapped and changed so in this uh, image uh, our u values are basically x values from left to right and y values are from also from 0 to 1 uh, from top to the bottom so this is actually a visual representation of that coordinate space so the thing is now values are from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 from here to here and from top to bottom so if you change it to 0 to 1 that's actually by default how image have uv space so they are basically values are spread from 0 to 1 and now we have the original image which actually this is the ori original uv so let's edit this uv now in the image uv modifier we have something like uh, distort uv so if we distort this uv and now connect it we can see now this image is distorted we can play with frequency to distort it more or less also all the options that we have typical in all the nodes which is rotation u and v position u and v scale is actually done by using these uvs so we have something like uh, in a uv modifier we have let's say rotate uv and then if we input this uv we can rotate it so since now at the top left corner it's zero we we'll rotate it around that but if we disconnect this move this back to the center so now center is zero zero is in the middle of the image and now rotate it we, we can see actually we are rotating these uvs so let's, let's do that using code so we load this image and now we can create uv so we can do that by using pg underscore image uv generate and then generate uv so there are two outputs we get uv and then we have this uv image which is basically this representation of kind of like a red yellowish black green image since this e image actually has just two channels so if you try to show this image uv as UV, uv image and now execute we see we now got this default uv so let's do something with that first let's just now change that position to the center so let's say u position is 0 0.5 and v position is 0 0.5 rerun it and now we get something like um, uv in which top left corner is actually contains values of zero and then values grow to the right and to the bottom so we can now edit this image using uv and then uv image is equal to pg underscore image uv modify and then rotate uv so we can rotate this uv by let's say 45 degrees and now since it's at the top left corner is zero zero it kind of looks weird so let's now also distort it uv and uv images pg underscore image uv modify distort uv 
and then input this UV. So now it's even distorted. So how to apply this UV to the image using code is we have that in a pg underscore image combine. We have u image function, which has as the input obviously image out. We just call this image. And then we have this UVs. And then we get actually this new image. Let's call it image out. And then if we execute, image out is not defined. So we have this image. And now our original image is distorted. We can see the original image like this. But if we apply this rotation in distortion, we get image like this. So this is basically how to use image UVs using code. Let's now create and edit images using only NumPy. So let's create some blank image. Image out is equal to pg underscore image generate and create a uniform. If we execute it, by default it is blue. So this is node in the image generator and uniform. If we pick something like blue, we get the same image. So how can we do this using numpy? Image out is equal to numpy and then full and then we should define its size so 256 by 256 we will use three channels for red green and blue and define the color which is going to be numpy array and then blue is equal to one uh, green is equal to zero and red is equal to zero if we execute it we get exactly the same image if we want to create green one, we put zero here. Nice. Okay, now let's create the gradient image. We can use we can do that using uh, image out is equal to numpy arrange. Let's create that thousand pixels. Reshape this to hundred rows and hundred columns, and divide it by ten thousand. <coughs> execute it we get this gradient if we want to rotate it we can just transpose this matrix we can also invert it or mirror it around the y-axis using just image out is equal to one minus image out and now we've flipped it okay what can we do next? We can crop the image. So for that, let's load the image. So image is equal to, we can delete all of this and use uh, pg image load and then image. <clears throat> and then pick some of these images. Let's say Luigi. png if we run it we get nothing since we don't have image out okay so let's say we want to crop this luigi we can do that by slicing numpy arrays so image is equal to image and then slice let's say rows 200 to 500 if we execute it, we get only that part. If we slice something like uh, 0 to 200, we will get the top part. Or just his face. Now we can also crop it. Um, so we are now cropping basically rows of this image, but we can crop also the columns. For that, we just pick all the rows and then pick just from column 0 to 200. So now we see we slice his hand. We can pick even the smaller part. Now we can see just half of the Luigi. So that's about cropping the image. So let's now do batch processing. So basically process multiple images. For, for that, we need to load multiple images. So for that, we can use pg underscore directory. So if we do something like, um, uh, let's say if image images, paths is equal to pg directory and put the path to that directory and 
and from that pg underscore directory we use images function and let's say we want to print it for for image path in images paths print image path we have error <clears throat> it's images so we get all of these five paths as we can see we have these five images we get just the names but if we put additional argument to this function that's called absolute path and put it to true and run it now we get the full paths so what we are going to do is um, we can de delete this image so now we will go through these paths load each of these images and process them somehow so let's say image is equal to pg image load image load this image path and then we can do something with that let's say image is equal to pg image modify and then resize it resize this image to let's say all of these images are going to be 256 by 256 we can also rotate it so image is equal to pg image modify and then rotate this image by 90 degrees so all of these images in this directory we will uh, rotate and scale to 256 by 256 but let's say we don't want to modify the original directory so let's say we want to copy all of these images and make like a temporary directory so for that we can also use pg underscore directory so pg underscore directory and then copy so first path is the path of the directory we want to use and the second one let's say let's call it test images temp so basically this will copy the directory and all of its content which in this case are these five images to this new directory so now we want to read all the images from that new directory and then load them and modify them so now we are loading all of these images we print our paths because we don't need it and now when we are done we can actually save this image for that we use pg underscore image save and then image first we put the path which is image path and then this image right and execute it so what do we have now we have test images but we have test images stamp and in this we have five of these images but for some reason they're not rotated so let's see what could have gone wrong so we load of these images we rotate them resize them let's say 180 which is bad stamp execute it so in these test images we have it like this test images stamp we see they are actually the same size but rotate let me check what are the angles in a rotate so in the image modifier we have rotate and rot oh it's probably some other ar argument so let's put rot to equal to 90 and then execute it now all the images are executed so we can see we basically batch processed all these images we can actually load them using the image um, image importer and then images we can browse this directory which is on the desktop we have this as temp and load this directory and now we have loop we can look for these rotated and scaled images so that's pretty much basics of the batch processing using Trivial Engine and Python. So that is it for today. I will probably make a lot more videos to explain this in more detail. So thank you guys very much for watching and see you next time.